Joining us right now is public affairs analyst Martin Slomba. He joins us via phone call to help make sense of this conversation. Good morning, Martins, and thank you for joining us. Good morning. A pleasure to be here. Yeah, Martins, welcome to the show. Thank you. All right, Martins, to Anambra election, we saw how it panned out. People expected that there would be a lot of violence and um, with, the, with all the security personnel deployed to the state. But it came out peaceful, beating the expectations of most Nigerians. What's your take on the election? Uh, well, it's um, a good development that the election took place and that it was generally peaceful and that uh, a number of Anambarians uh, participated in the process. However, we know the build-up to this uh, particular election. We know that um, there were a lot of, uh, if you like, skirmishes, misgivings about the election, principally because there is some dispute as to legitimacy, there is some dispute as to the people not wanting to remain in Nigeria, and uh, we don't have to pretend. Mm. The central issue is that there's a, a young man called uh, Nambikano who is in detention, and he has a lot of followers. And I must say that the followers have been very, very, if you like, determined. They've been uh, resolute about their seat at home, even when there was uh, uh, instruction uh, claimed to have been given by uh, Nambi or directive that have been given by Nambikano that they should abandon the seat at home. But voluntarily, a good number of the Anambarians and other Easterners held on to the seat at home. Some people attributed that to fear and uh, the unpredictability of the situation. However, given that the same uh, IPOB came and said, all right, the elections will go on, and again, the security deployment seemed to have given some reassurance that people could come out, we got what we got. So not bad in the final analysis. Uh, talking about the huge security uh, deployment to Anambra State, some people are seeing it as being counterproductive. You know, people got scared, you know, uh, seeing these uh, security personnel all over the place, fully armed. You know, they got so scared they couldn't even come out. You know, uh, remember the usual cases of... Uh, uh, what is it now? Stray bullets stuff, uh, yes, you, know, hand, discharge. Uh, you know, accidental discharge and what have you. So because of this, because I think kudos should go to uh, the IPOB that's uh, talking about the indigenous uh, people of uh, Biafra, the, uh, <laughs> the band one, you know, for that last minute instruction or directive, you know, uh, you know, uh, relaxing the order on a seat at home uh, wouldn't you buy that idea the way i see it you know this thing called fear is uh, is two ways the government that is in charge of security you know had their own fears and then the ipob knowing that their leader is in captivity also had their fears so between the two extremes, their positions uh, more or less shifted. That is the way I see it. So to a large extent, it wasn't as if the IPOB was very excited about the elections holding, nor was it that the government was very excited about making that kind of huge deployment. But given the circumstance, they had to find the middle ground to move forward. So to that extent, one will say that, yes, the development was uh, more or less encouraging. But again, you know that at the end of the day, voter apathy, you know, reluctance to come out to vote was still there. And again, the palpable fear was still in the atmosphere, regardless of all of those preparations. But again, uh, we will say that it was a better development, a better outcome that at least the election did hold. Why was the case of uh, Ihiela peculiar? Of all the 21 uh, local government areas, you know, it was just Ihiela uh, that was... Uh... Uh, you know that uh, resistance can be measured. You can say that the degree of stubbornness in certain places, uh, <laughs> more or less, is not the same. The Ihiela people, you know, uh, before now, I know there was some skirmish. Uh, some people died before this time. And uh, to that extent, they were very, very, very reluctant.
reluctant to participate in the process. And don't forget that some sections of the IPOB movement were still insisting that the elections, you know, should not hold. So I want to believe that those in the Ihiala told the line of the elections should not hold, and uh, they also had some grievances regarding the skirmishes that happened before now. So to that extent, uh, they wanted to have their pound of flesh. So I believe that uh, more or less they, they had their way. That is precisely what, what, what I believe took place. All right, now the Nigerian Civil Society Situation Room uh, mentioned that the rate of votes buying it was widespread in Anambra elections. And also the CU people has come out to say that the, the disruptions or the, would I call it disruptions or inconclusive elections in Anambra State was due to INEX disorganization. They were not really ready and it reflects on how the 2023 election would be. Do you buy, do you agree to that statement there or you have a contrary opinion? Uh, to, to a large extent, preparedness has always been a challenge for INEC. Hmm. We know that a few years before now, the general phrase was inconclusive, inconclusive. You know, we saw what happened in Oshun, we saw yeah, the okay. outcome in Kogi and right. a number of places. Now, INEC has introduced another gadget they say they have their biometric voter accreditation, the, the beavers. Mm. And uh, at working. the end of the day, yes, you know, it malfunctioned in a number of places. So to that extent, we should be able to say that, yes, INEC uh, faltered. We should also be able to say that uh, regardless of the voter party, you know, uh, INEC should have used this opportunity to shine. But at the end of the day, they didn't really shine. So INEC you know, did not prepare adequately. I suspect that they were also anticipating that there was going to be violence, so mm -hmm. they needed to tread cautiously. But at the end of the day, well, we have some results, but I wouldn't say that that is uh, impressive. If uh, you have registered voters of that number, and at the end of the day, you just have about 20% uh, representation coming out to vote, or even less, I don't think that is good enough. Mm -hmm. But again, we, we just have to move the process forward. Um, so far, uh, APGA has got like 18 Hello. of the uh, 21 states there, uh, with one each going to PDP and uh, YPP. Uh, with this Ihiela election, oh. supplementary election taking place today, do you ever see the possibility of the outcome changing the dynamics? <laughs> Interesting. Uh, the only thing I can tell you is that this is Nigeria. The unpredictability of events, you know, uh, I must say that that is where we have our strengths, or that is where this regime has its strengths. Uh, you, some of the things, the outcomes that we see, uh, they are nothing short of magic. So, to that extent, do not be surprised that something untoward happens in Iyala. Because, you know, if you have written exams before, maybe in a higher institution or even in primary school, at some point uh, you hear things like area of concentration. Mm. So, now that you have imagined the way that it is, of course, Iyala can spring surprises. This is a country where you had elections in a state. And the old registered voters were uh, said to have voted. Nobody fell sick, nobody died, nobody. So anything is possible. With the kind of budget that is uh, there today, you know, Ihiala becomes the area of concentration. So if you're going to, if you were to buy votes before with 500 naira, with 1,000 naira, with 5,000 naira, <laughs> you know, parties can afford to buy votes with 50,000 naira now and go for the kill. So that's where we are. Anything is possible. All right, um, yesterday I was looking through some comments on social media about this Anambra State election. Just like my colleague mentioned, I was even going to ask this question. Now, someone, some, some person said that if 18 out of 20 local government, one local government areas have been won by APGA, why not go ahead to declare um, Soludo the winner? And no. the, the person went for that. Now, this is a reaction yeah. of a Nigerian. He went for that to say that. But we live in a country where vegan, there's a high rate of vegan. So never can tell if the other parties are trying to use that as an opportunity to rig the election. So um, this is a reaction from 
a social media user who is a Nigerian. So I was thinking, I'm, I'm trying to ask you now, is it that um, I never could not have declared to the winner or they had to now, you've, you've mentioned area of concentration, knowing fully well that these parties, we live in a country where vote buying is the order of the day of any election. So don't think uh, Anek would have done that. No, I think that uh, in this particular circumstance, Anek, you know, is not in a position to declare a winner simply because mathematically mm. you have not satisfied the fact that uh, the margin of winning is wider than the margin of, you know, losing. Mm. By that I mean that if you look at the total number of votes cast and you look at what is outstanding, for instance, in Ihiala, I understand that Ihiala registered voters are about 148,000 or thereabout. Now, if Soludo, the person who is, uh, you know, ahead now, has about 130 something, clearly you cannot declare him winner because <laughs> with what happened in Kano, in mm. 2015, mm. it is very With possible for Jay. everybody. Mm. Yes, it is very possible for everybody in Igala to go and vote. You know, a completely different party. <laughs> so, to that extent, you cannot, you know, declare a uh, Soludo winner. So, mathematically, it is impossible for INEC to have declared that result. You know, but if the margin were, you know, wider than what the, the margins are now, then they could have done so. All right. Now, now let's talk about the the INEC and there was a report that an INEC and ad hoc staff absconded with uh, result sheets um, for a particular local government area, and also we, we saw videos of the vehicles trying to go using used to convey this election electoral materials where nothing short of I don't know what to describe this, but it wasn't it, it's not befitting for an election. Yes. So no standard. Uh, okay. Well, uh, like we started this uh, discussion from the beginning, we said that anything is possible in Nigeria. But again, mm -hmm. the challenge for logistics in Anambra, I don't want to excuse anybody, but I think that with the kind of palpable fear, I also know that uh, mm -hmm. a number of people who had been, uh, if you like, uh, commissioned to do certain jobs, at the last minute, they decided to back back out. So at that uh, kind of uh, late hour, it is possible that that was the challenge that these people that were arranging the logistics had. So but we always had use... issues like this, even when there are no, there are no, there's no possible violence in states. We've had issues where cases where the vehicles, you, you see so many kinds, so kind, different kind of bad vehicles used to convey, even uh, boats uh, yes. capsizing, you know, all of these things. The reason, the reason is simple. We'll go back to what uh, <laughs> Fai or she said about stomach infrastructure. Now, you know that in the chain of uh, spending government money, you find all kinds of people in between the, uh, the requests or the requisition and the delivery. You could call them middlemen, you could call them uh, hungry men, as the case may be. So if maybe you're giving 10,000 hours to do a job, and your job is to convey materials to a certain location, and there is no extra beyond the 10,000, and somebody comes and says, yes, I could do this job for 10,000, now, the go between who needs the stomach infrastructure is not likely to part with the 10,000. You would rather go for one rickety vehicle that will get the same job done, regardless of how the, the vehicle appears in your eyes. If you can pay 1,000 and keep 9,000 for stomach infrastructure, he will tell you that at the end of the day, the materials got to the destination. So that is what counts. So to that extent, it's a peculiar Nigerian syndrome, and it is really unfortunate. However, be that as it may, the situation with Anambra, like I said, you know, initially, it may have to do because of the uh, palpable fear. So that could be a factor. Okay. But then again, let us not forget that nothing is impossible with Nigerians <laughs> and with Nigeria under this regime. So to that extent, everybody just has to be vigilant. That is the best we can do in the circumstance. Thank you so very much, uh, Martin Slumba. My pleasure. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Martin Slumba, for um, sharing your thoughts on this. But before I let you go, I want to ask you a very short question and briefly, with all of the things yes. that have happened, um, in preparation for the 2023 election, what do you think INEX should do and do well, just so we don't have a repetition of past events or a, an inconclusive election again in 2023. 
Please, please, I sir. think that the problem with our elections, you know, to a large extent, has to do with the disarray of the electorate. Nigerians should find some common uh, ground to build bridges, even if not across the entire country. There must be, you know, a power block that can challenge, are you with me, constituted authority as it is now. Because the rascality that we see in government, you know, the impunity that we see in government, we cannot allow it to fester for too long. Mm -hmm. It will not help this country. And that is my opinion. I believe that the electorate, they need to begin to build bridges before 2023. And at the end of the day, when you have a mass, you know, uh, uh, reluctance or a mass enthusiasm to get something done, the result will be completely different. So I wish us well. Thank you so much, Martin. Thank you. Thank you so Martin. very much. Okay, that's been uh, Martin Slumba, public affairs analyst, uh, doing justice to the discussion we have this morning.